At COSI, we know science is everywhere. Explore Columbus with me and let's find some evidence. Hi, hey, Laura. Sarah, come on Hi. in. Thank you. Welcome to COSI on one of our off days here. Hey everybody, it's Lauren from COSI. And Sarah from Experience Columbus. Lauren, I am so excited to be at COSI today, the number one science museum in the country, four years in a row. Sarah, we are thrilled to have you here. Excuse the mess and the noise, we are on a closed day, but that doesn't mean we can't still learn. Ooh. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes to our dinosaur gallery and introduce you to one of our coworkers, Catherine. Great, let's do it. Hi, welcome to the Dinosaur Gallery. My name is Katherine Davis. I'm the manager of Special Education Experiences and Strategies. Um, I do accessibility inclusion at COSI to make sure science is for everybody. That's awesome. Well, so nice to meet you, Katherine. Thank you for having us in here. So what are these models? So these are 3D printed models that have been 3D scanned to be as close of a replica as possible as the skulls you see right behind them. And what's the benefit of having models like these in the dinosaur gallery? Dinosaurs are a super popular topic. Everybody loves dinosaurs, especially little kids. They love to come here and that's a big reason that people enjoy COSI. But because a lot of these pieces are fairly fragile, they're behind barriers, behind glass, so they're not always accessible for everyone that comes. The really great thing about these is that they are a form of universal design. So they are great for so many people that come into COSI. One aspect that's commonly known is for blind individuals. So when they come through, they can't always engage with the things behind barriers, but this is a way that they can actually touch, feel, experience the same thing that everyone else is. Um, but it's also great for those small kids that come running through the hall that they'll actually take time to touch and explore something instead of running on by. Um, it's also great for individuals like myself with ADHD that it actually makes me sit, pause, and engage and actually take the time to read and learn about the dinosaurs around me. That's so cool. So it looks like there's some other ways that guests can interact with the models here with audio and there's braille. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yep, so we have braille for blind individuals when they're engaging with it. It'll give them the independence of learning information as well as we've included an audio description to be able to help describe the things that they're feeling on the models. Is there any type of touch experience like this uh, besides the dinosaur gallery? So the great thing is COSI has lots of hands-on activities. We're continuing to expand to other areas as well. We actually have two fantastic tactile areas up at space that actually have a night sky that you can explore as well as images from the Hubble telescope and the James Webb telescope as well. Ooh, that's cool. Come to COSI, you can touch dinosaurs and the stars. Why don't you go on down to our exhibit shop and meet our amazing exhibit team that created them? Sounds great. Let's do it. Welcome to the Fabrication Lab. I'm Adrian French, Director of Exhibit Fabrication. I'm Matt Androsky, one of the fabricators here. Oh, great. It's so nice to meet you both, and thanks for allowing us in this really cool space in COSI. So tell us a little bit about how those 3D models were made. Catherine reached out to us initially with a grant proposal. Um, so I worked with her a little bit on that and trying to figure out how we could realize her vision. But one of the things we decided we could use is a 3D printer and specifically a resin one that would allow us to use like a resin that's more durable and flexible, less likely to break um, and cleaner in general. So instead of having like a lot of seams that you see on a lot of 3D models, this is more seamless and smoother. So better for a tactile experience. So Matt, what are these printers? This is an FDM printer. It uses spools of plastic filament to melt it and extrude it out and print the part itself. The resin is a little bit different. It uses UV light like a projector to project on a resin and that hardens each layer. It's physically a different process. So how fast could you print a model on this printer? A prototype will take about 20 hours, where in the resin printer, it'll take about seven days. Oh my gosh, that's a huge time savings. Absolutely. Adrian, what is the benefit of having both of these types of machines on site? So what we can do is get our information faster by using our filament printers here. Those are gonna do the same job in one day, so a seventh of the time. That's the main importance of having both. This can do all our testing for us so we know exactly what size 
all the other details are worked out. We're not wasting seven days to find out. Here is the, one of the first prototypes in the filament printing. And as you can see, it allows us to actually see in there and physically feel where we need to add supports, where we're going to mount it to the board, and how guests are going to interact with it. What sort of things did you find out when you were experimenting with scale or materials? Yeah, we wanted to see what kind of detail we actually wanted to print. I could scale it back or we could add detail, we could take away detail depending on the time it takes to print and actually like what we need to feel. So tell us a little bit more about the process that was used to create the skulls that we just saw. Yes, it starts out first with our 3D scanner. It is a structured light 3D scanner which uses a projector that projects out a specific pattern which these two cameras can pick up the distortion and puts a point cloud which I could then take into a computer-aided software and manipulate into the final 3D design. At first, the scan maybe took a day, where now the same type of scan I could get it done within half an hour. So how else are we using this 3D printing process throughout COSI? The biggest area we're probably going to use it in is the dinosaur gallery because there is no other space that is like as hands off. I am hoping that we go forward and scan many, many more things in there. I know Matt has on his agenda to do one full scan of the Ch Chasmosaurus dinosaur. Um, so this will be our first chance to sort of see how difficult it is to scan and print the full dinosaur skeleton. Uh, we're gonna have to add some supports to that. There are other structural issues that weren't as big of an issue with just the skulls. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today and showing us how COSI has really enhanced accessibility throughout the museum and loved learning about the differences in your printing process as well. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure as always. Gentlemen, Sarah, thank you so much for coming out today. We really did learn a lot about our dinosaur gallery. We did. It was so cool to see all the ways that COSI is making science more accessible. And just proof that science is everywhere and for everyone. See you next time on Science Tour 614.